Welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. This is video two covering details about Seesaw. And as in the last video, I explained that in this video, we are going to be talking about adding students to your Seesaw account, um, getting them signed into Seesaw, what to do before inviting parents, and then how to invite parents to the Seesaw account, and then any frequently asked questions, a few frequently asked questions that you might have about using Seesaw. So let's get started by showing you how to get Seesaw and get your students onto Seesaw. Okay, let's talk about the different ways there are to get your students signed in to your Seesaw account. Um, this screen is actually from the Seesaw Help Center and it talks about the different ways that you can can share your Seesaw class with your students. The first way is via class code and that's if you have maybe one or two iPads for your kids to use within your classroom and those devices are shared. Um, so what you can do is you can have the students sign in using a QR code that you get directly from Seesaw or a text code that again comes directly from Seesaw. And basically they either scan the the QR code or type the class code in and then they are connected directly to your journal. The second way is recommended more so if you are in a one-to-one -one environment where a student has their own device and they can sign in the same way you could give them the class code or um, give them a text code and then they choose their name from the list. But in the one-to-one -one setting, if you give them that, they, are actually, they can actually stay in, signed into their journal for up to one year. So if they, though, would need to sign in with a different student account, basically student one would have to sign out and then student two, two would be able to sign in. <clears throat> and the last possible way to get your students to sign in is through using email or a Google account sign in. And this is only recommended for kids who are older um, because this is it requires them to have a Google account or a email address to sign into Seesaw. And basically Seesaw is then connected to their Google account and password and they sign in that way um, and you have to enter that into your Seesaw account. Okay, first to get students signed in, I wanna show you where to go in your account to find either the text code, the QR code, or the email addresses to get students signed in. So if you click up here in your account, once you're logged in um, by your name, you get this menu. And so you're gonna come down here and you can click where it says get class code. And that screen that pops up is the, first of all, the you give the QR code. It tells them where to go for an uh, URL to sign in if you're using a browser. Um, if you're using a mobile device, it will just ask for the QR code. Here's where you can get the text code if you wish to have them sign in. Notice that the text code is only valid for a certain amount of time, so each time you go in here that may change. So just be aware of that. Um, if you want to print a poster, you just click here and it'll print that uh, poster for the, Q for the QR code. And you can um, change how you manage the class to send the email right down here where it says manage class. And you can change how they sign in. This will allow you to change it so that they can sign in via email if you choose. In this next part, we're going to talk about getting your students signed into your Seesaw account. And in the beginning part of this, we talked about that there was two different ways to allow them to join. The one way that it talked about is sending as having your students sign up via email. If you choose to do that, um, of course, they have to know their own email addresses and passwords. But then what they're going to do is they're going to go to seesaw.me and they're going to choose that they're a student. And then they use their email address that they have to sign in. And then they choose a new student account. And once they do that, um, and they create their account within Seesaw, then you give them the class code. And if I click here, it'll show you my class code right there. Um, it'll give you the class code, and once they type that in, then they're finished creating that account within their email address. So for those kids to get back into their account, they would have to sign into their email address. 
Now, the other kind or the other way is to have them join via code. And if you or um, via QR code, so um, if I click here on my screen, I get the QR code that I could um, print out for the students to join. Uh, and then they can join by going to a browser and typing in C, just seesaw.me and it'll bring them to this screen and then they're going to choose that they're a student and then it's going to bring up their screen where they can um, scan the QR code or they could enter the class code. And I'm just going to code here. Um, so if I do that and then I go back into my student account and then I put in the class code, I'm going to say student sign in. And then it's going to take me into that class. Now this is the student. Um, I'm in here as the student and it'll show you the class name up here. Uh, and then it'll show you only the feed for the, for the class. So that's how they can join via a browser. And I'm going to close out of that. And then I'm going to take you next into how they can join um, via an iPad or a mobile device. Okay, now to get your kids logged in via a mobile device um, with a QR code, first of all, you'll have to load the Seesaw class app which you see over here on the left and when you open that app it's going to ask if they're a teacher or a student so we are signing in as a student I'm going to select student and then it's going to bring up a screen and the screen allows you to use an email to use the text code like I showed you earlier or to scan a QR code so if I tap where it says scan a QR code and enable the camera and access the camera then I have printed off the QR code for my class and so the student can just use that code and then it takes them right into your class and so as you can see this would be a student view for the class and that this is where they can add any um, of their artifacts to begin and that is how you get students to join um, your class. you have your account created and you know how to invite your students to your class, it's time to start thinking about inviting your parents. And this is one of the most powerful pieces of Seesaw because your parents now get to take part in your in their child's education on a daily feed, um, depending on how you decide to set it up. Um, but the first thing you got to do is you need to make sure that your parent access is enabled. And the best way to do that is you click on your class name up here in the upper left, come down to manage class, and then you scroll down to where you see parents. And right here, as long as this is green, your parent access is enabled. If it's not, just click on the circle over here to switch it to green. Now, once that's done, um, you are ready to start inviting parents. Now, a good rule of thumb before inviting parents is to create a little welcome note for the parents so as soon as they join, they see this note at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the plus sign over here in the upper right hand corner. Um, a couple options for you here is you could actually record yourself giving this welcome message um, and the details behind it. You could also add a note and I'm going to choose to add a note here. Um, a couple things that you want to add in this, first of all, welcome to the class, and then um, a kind of a detail about how you're going to use this class, and a couple specific things for your parents to know about using the class. And so mine reads, welcome to our Seesaw class. I am so excited to be able to communicate your child's learning through this class. A few things to remember about our Seesaw class. One, all comments should be constructive. Learning something new takes time, and we need your help to make it successful. And that is in um, relation to using Seesaw and, and, and how you're going to make it function for your parents and students. There's always great ideas that can come from um, parents, and so for them to make that suggestion is, is a good idea. 
And number two, specific comments are best. How can you add to the conversation? You want to put that in there to make the point that they need, they can um, post comments, but you want them to be specific and to the point um, so that your students are encouraged to read those and be, and parents are encouraged to be insightful. And three, in an everyone post, please remember your comment is shared with everyone, students and parents. And this is an important part to put on the welcome note because they need to, parents um, don't necessarily understand that if a um, feed is shared with everyone, when they make the comment, it is also shared with everyone. Of course, that is also um, up to you because you can accept or deny the comment as well. Um, in this last sentence, this is a great way to encourage and lift up our students. You want to put that positive note at the end because you want the comments and in, in the use of this app to be encouraging for your students. Um, and you want them to want to share with their parents. So once the welcome letter is complete, and you might say, um, put your name at the end and sign it. And then once your message is complete, you're going to click on the screen check mark. And it's going to give you the option that you could add more text or you could record your voice reading your letter if you choose. And then once that's done, go ahead and click on the check mark again. And once that's done, you get the selection of your students. If you click everyone, then you're going to see that it's going to go to all the students and the parents as they sign it. So I'm going to check mark that. And then I have folders set up, and so I have... Uh, messages from the teacher. So I'm just going to add that to that folder. I'm going to click the check mark again and then it's going to upload that message, that welcome message to the feed. So after that you want to, so you have your welcome letter for your parents. Um, Now you want to send home the parent invite or the parent handout. And the way that you could do that is you go over here and you click on your class and you're going to go to invite parents. And when you click on invite parents, it's going to give you a few details there. But you have the, the option to print the parent invite handout or send via email. Um, I like to do both just to make sure we get our parents connected. But if I click here where it says print parent invite handout, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up a PDF. And I'm going to want to uncheck the two-sided because this PDF is going to print out one for each student. So if you look here, this print and this QR code is specific to this student and so when the when you send it home you send the specific student um, note home to that specific parent and then as you can see it gives some instructions um, some details about the tool itself and then it gives the parent instructions on how to sign up it tells them how to sign up um, via a mobile device or how to sign up via um, a browser on a computer so it gives them the steps for both and once they complete those steps then they will have access to only their students portfolio so that's how to invite them uh, via the printout if I send a parent invite email what I do is I copy this detail and then I paste it into the specific parents email and it gives a, again, it gives a little bit of information. And then you can go back and tie that parent to uh, the student account. Um, but again, if you choose to, I maybe would start with the QR codes first. And then if you have trouble getting a parent invited, then you can go back and send an email. Or you could do them both right away. Um, but those are very easy ways to get parents involved and to get them signed up for their student Seesaw account. Okay, and finally, for some frequently asked questions when using Seesaw. The first question is, is are there, um, 
is the parent invite come in any other languages? And actually it does, it comes in um, Spanish or French. And so I'll show you how to get those. If you click on the name of your class, go down to invite parents. When you click on that parent invite handout, let it load here. If you scroll down towards the bottom, here are the list of the frequently asked questions. And so this first link, if you click on it, it will take you to the Spanish version. The French version is right here. So once you click on it, you get another PDF to print that version of the parent invite. The next question is, why do I need to approve some parents and um, not others? Well, the parents that you send an invite to through email, they have to be approved because that email link gives them um, um, access to the entire class, which then you have to go and set them up with, their, with only their student feed. So the ones that you invite or accept via email will have to be accepted as parents and then um, given their student only their student access. The ones that you send an invite to through the QR codes, that is a specific QR code tied specifically to their student. And so the, the um, acceptance for those is actually giving them that letter. Um, so when they have the QR code, they are automatically um, approved. Uh, and then another question and a concern is what can parents see? And I'm going to log into my um, parent account here. Your parents are only allowed to see their student feed. Get my password right here. So I actually um, can only see my child's artifacts and then what the teacher posts as everyone. So earlier in the video I showed you that this welcome letter I posted to everyone so I as a parent have access to that and can also like or comment um, based on that feed which is also has to be approved by the teacher. Um, but then I can see only my student items if you look up here though, um, another frequently asked question is can parents have access to more than one child's account? And the answer is yes. So under my name, I show that I have two children. I have um, ES and SG as my two child feed. And so I can switch between the two over here um, and see their artifacts. And then I can also go back and add another child to my journal. So I could click here and then I could scan an additional QR code or um, use a link. So I could have all my children in my one Seesaw account. The only thing that parents want to be cautious of is when they, to, to load another child, they should follow the sign-in instructions. But when they choose sign-in, instead of creating an account, they use their already created a parent account. Um, and then they just click here so they sign in with their email address that they've already used and then they just add the journal. So they don't want to um, create a second account, um, but they do, they can invite, or they can sign into another student account. So those are some of the common frequently asked questions. If you go to the Seesaw website, there is lots of them listed there for you as well if you have any additional questions. Thanks for watching. And for our next Seesaw video, which would be Seesaw 3, we're going to focus on how to use Seesaw in the classroom, some of the different tools that Seesaw offers and, and what that might look like with your students or um, for you. And so I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.